Well, good morning, YouTube. Madam Roy back again. Back to you with another vintage radio find. If you guys have watched my previous video, um, I went to an estate sale yesterday, and I picked up a few goodies. Uh, among them is this very nice uh, vintage 1970s uh, Stewart radio. Now, this is special for a few reasons. One, it's, of course, vintage. That's a given. <laughs> and two, this actually has a feature that I really like in um, radios, and that is a wideband AM radio. So looking at the front of this, you guys can see it has the uh, AM, FM, and they call it sports mode. One thing I really like about this is it's just like a lot of the vintage radios of its time period. It actually has a map of the world with the different zones for a short wave. But sadly, this particular model is not short wave uh, capable. This is AM, FM, and of course, uh, sports AM, or like I've said, it's called Y-band. Uh, you can see here you have your different bands. You have um, sports mode, FM, and log. And what that does is it gives the log base gives you a uh, indication of where your stations are. Like if you have a hard time seeing either of those, you can say, okay, your favorite station is 92.5. That would be you log that at about a 2.5. Down here you have your AFC, your automatic fine tuning, which is for the FM. You got the regular FM band there. And then you have your sports AM band. So again, if you are a uh, fan of AM radio, a, a radio with wide band is a must because if you have, if you ever been in an area where you have a semi weak AM signal, um, it kind of sounds tinny or it sounds like you're listening it through a shaft and it's very hard to make out. Well, the wideband AM definitely helps with that, especially with the weaker signals. You have your volume here, on and off and volume. And then, of course, your tuner knob right here. One thing that I really like about this is the, uh, the grill. It's actually leather. It's in fairly decent shape. There are a couple little uh, breaks. There's one right here, and there's a little one here at the bottom, but I don't think the camera will actually pick that up. Uh, you see that it says Stewart Company. This is made in uh, Taiwan, I believe. Let me double check that. Hong Kong. I actually have a cheat sheet here, because you guys know I'm a little forgetful sometimes. <laughs> Nice feature down here, but unfortunately I can't use it. This would originally come with uh, rechargeable batteries. So when you have it plugged in, you'd actually put this to the on position and you can actually charge the radio. So that was a nice feature. We'd have rechargeable batteries, so we'd have to keep going out and replacing the batteries. Um, on the side here, we have a regular antenna. Um, as you can see, the antenna goes around the whole side and then you can just pull it up. I find that this has a very strong tuner, so I really haven't found a need to use the antenna pretty much for anything. On this side, you have your hole for your earbuds. Now, they are in here. I will show you guys that. On the back here, it shows you a little label, and you guys can pause the video if you want to read that, but it does say Stewart Brand Model ST821AA. AC 120 volts at 5 watts, uh, 50 or 60 hertz, it can do either, or it runs DC 6 volts, and that's 1.2 watts, and that's 4C style batteries. And then it says, this receiver complies with FCC requirements part 15 subpart C as of the date of manufacture, and it does say made in Hong Kong, if you guys can see that. So, I'm going to go ahead and open up the battery compartment. Um, you actually do that by opening these two straps here. One, two, and then it just uh, pulls out here. And I'll try to get a close-up of this so you guys can see a little better. Alright, I took you guys off the tripod so you can have a better look in here. If I open this up, first thing you notice is it does have the original earbuds. Now this is what you would have seen back in the 70s when this was um, manufactured. Basically that just plugs into the side here and you plug it in and put that in your ear and you can listen to it without bothering anybody. Now of course this is just one because this is a monaural set. Uh, this is your AC plug, uh, non-polarized. 
Not surprising for the time period. Still in very good shape, no uh, breaks or anything in there, so I might give that a try later. And then, of course, you have your battery compartment. Now, sadly, this is not, this battery compartment is not in the best shape. As you can see, the uh, plastic is actually broken on the bottom. And I attempted to tape this with limited success. You can see that it's still making a connection to the, uh, see that would be the negative side of the terminal, but it's not making a very good connection. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get on eBay later and uh, see if I can order a new one. I know that these are still available. Um, I'm not exactly sure what the price on this will be, but uh, I think it's definitely worth investing in because this is a very nice piece of vintage transistor radio history. Uh, over here, you can see it does have some information in here. Uh, it says this receiver uses transistors, devices which are not used or used serviceable. I think it should say user serviceable. To prevent electronic shock, do not remove back cover or refer servicing to qualified service personnel. Basically, that's just to cover their own butts. You know, there are people out there that will try to repair radios themselves and basically get themselves in deep, deep trouble. Now, if you're running this off of the batteries, there's very little chance of an electric shock, but plug into um, AC power, if you touch the wrong thing, like a capacitor or transformer, yeah, you could probably blow yourself across the room, so. A word of warning, if you guys don't know what you're doing, working on electronics like this, refer it to an expert. It's better to be safe than sorry and err on the side of caution. Alright, now have it plugged into AC power. We'll go ahead and give this thing a little test here. Turn it on. And we're on the AM band right now. Free 30 minute coaching call with Dave Smith, specifically geared toward your children or your grandchildren. Call the office if you want to do some college planning. I've also told you recently. And 12 months deferred interest. Plus, check out Maytag's rebates on any new system. Home of the best warranty in the heating and cooling business. Call Pallet Heating and Cooling right now for details and great savings. Rachel begged Leah to give some of the mandrakes to her, but Leah angrily treated The sunshine. Talk to the 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 as you can hear, the AM uh, band definitely sounds very good, uh, especially considering I have my uh, strobe light on there and a few other devices in the house which usually give a lot of uh, static electricity, um, you know, static ESD, I meant to say. A lot of the uh, devices in this house will my wireless router, so this actually does pretty well, all things considered. And again, that's really thanks to that uh, wideband AM radio. And I gave a whopping $2 for this. And I'll show you guys the sheet really quickly. This is the old, only bit of information I could find. There's one website that had information about this. And this was at the Radio Museum. And it dates this radio to uh, 1970. Um, you can see that it does say it has semiconductors present. Super Herodyne. Um, now this is interesting. This actually says this radio is supposed to broadcast in short rate wave, but this one actually doesn't. I don't know if that is a misprint on their part, or indeed they did have some of these models that did have a short wave capability, even though this one doesn't. Um, you can see the model is right there. Uh, material is modern plastic. This is not a Bakelite radio. This is mainly uh, leather on the outside of this, or more likely pleather. <laughs> and it's called this a very small portable and pocket set, only 8 inches. 
and they even have a picture you can see what the box it came in would have looked like now unfortunately i got everything but the box you can even see there it came with uh some rechargeable batteries i can't make out what brand they are but i'm pretty sure they were nickel cadmium batteries all right so this is a review of my new Stewart model ST821AA vintage 1970 transistor radio. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please remember to like and subscribe. And as always, have a blessed day, everybody.